In this video, I will describe how the gray sensor works and its many quirks. First of all, the gray sensor is able to make up two different senses, smell and hearing. The gray sensor does this with holes in each segment, and depending on the animal and how it evolved, the gray sensor is either better at smelling or hearing, rarely being even. Although how efficient the gray sensor is, only one family and one species uses them, Trandifera, except for Suki Cebolas and Kerulum Arani. Although Magnus Dens has arms that look and act like gray sensors, because it can't smell and only hears, it's not considered a gray sensor. Gray sensor segments are able to move with muscles but have no bones, only a chitin exterior. Gray sensors do have two major weaknesses, one of which being that they don't work very well under the soda, and sometimes they don't work at all if the animal has very rare moments when it interacts with soda. An example of this would be the future descendants Crassapellus and Desertum Incola. Luckily, no gray sensor can be permanently disabled by soda or water. The second major weakness is that gray sensors cannot be regrown if broken or bitten off, only scarring and eventually growing chitin where it needs to. A bizarre association that can be seen more well in the prehistoric era but can still be seen in the current era is that animals that use gray sensors are blind. Blindness is not caused by gray sensors and this is only a freaky coincidence. An animal with a gray sensor can still have nostrils and ears, it's just that no animal with such an adaptation has survived to the current day. But this usually ends up giving the animal great hearing and directional smelling, telling the animal exactly where smell is coming from. The more segments a gray sensor has, the better its smell and hearing will be depending on the animal. Animals, just like nostrils, ears, or mouths, tend to develop and grow gray sensors on its head or face. That's about it for the Gray Sensor.